This lesson will show how to graph the cosecant function over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. To better understand the graph of the cosecant function, cosecant x is equal to one divided by sine x, and since division by zero is undefined, wherever the sine function value is equal to zero, the cosecant function is undefined, which means the graph of the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote wherever the sine function is equal to zero. Similarly, wherever the sine function is equal to one, since the reciprocal of one is one, the cosecant function value is also one, and wherever the sine function value is negative one, the cosecant function value is also negative one, because the reciprocal of negative one is negative one. Let's take a look at the graph using desmos.com. Before we graph though, let's click the wrench in the upper right hand corner. Notice how I have the calculator in degree mode here at the bottom. The interval for the x-axis is from negative 400 degrees to positive 400 degrees with a step of 45 degrees, and the y-axis is over the interval from negative seven to positive seven with a step of one. Let's go ahead and close this, and now let's graph y equals cosecant x. Right away you might notice that the period of the cosecant function is the same as the period of the sine function, which is 360 degrees. However, the graph of the cosecant function does not have an amplitude because there is no max or min function value because the graph goes up indefinitely or goes up forever as well as goes down indefinitely or goes down forever. And now let's make the connection between the graph of the sine function and the cosecant function. So let's go ahead and clear this graph and now let's graph y equals sine x which I've graphed here as a dashed graph in orange. So now I'm emphasizing the fact that the cosecant function values and the sine function values are reciprocals of one another, or the cosecant x is equal to one divided by sine x. Wherever the sine function is equal to zero, the graph of the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote, which means it will be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 360 degrees, x equals negative 180 degrees, x equals zero degrees, x equals 180 degrees, and x equals 360 degrees. Let's go ahead and graph these vertical lines. And now, wherever the sine function value is one, the cosecant function value will be the same because one is a reciprocal of one, and the sine function is equal to one of the high points on the graph of the sine function here and here. Similarly, wherever the sine function value is equal to negative one, so is the cosecant function value, which would be the low points on the graph of the sine function. So now we know the graph of the cosecant function must pass through these four points and approach the vertical asymptotes. Just by knowing this information, we can now make a nice graph of the cosecant function. Let's look at that again. Looking at the graph carefully, notice where the sine function is concave down, the cosecant function is concave up, and where the sine function is concave up, the cosecant function is concave down. Now if we did want to find some additional points on the graph of the cosecant function, once again we can take advantage of the fact that we know that the sine function values and the cosecant function values are reciprocals. So for example, looking at this table here, since the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, the cosecant function value of 30 degrees must be equal to the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1 or 2, Looking at the graph at x equals 30 degrees, here's the point on the graph of the sine function, and here's a related point on the graph of the cosecant function. Notice how the sine function value is 0 0.5 over 1 half, the cosecant function value is positive two. Similarly, the sine of 150 degrees is equal to 1 half, and therefore the cosecant of 150 degrees is equal to positive two. This information gives us this point on the graph of the sine function, and this related point on the graph of the cosecant function. So again, we can use the fact that we know these function values are reciprocals to help us find additional points on the graph of the cosecant function if needed. I hope you found this helpful.